Hello and welcome to Irish Football Fan TV. Let's talk about the Republic of Ireland men's national team job and the farce that it has become. I mean, we go back to November when Stephen Kenny was, I, I suppose, his contract was let run out uh, rather than sacking him because the FAI don't have the finances, I suppose, to, to pay the compensation on that. So they let the contract run out. There was no real danger at that. They had the game against New Zealand and stuff like that. And it was his way of kind of saying goodbye and, and James McLean's as well. So you move on from that and you think that the FAI are going to have enough time to go from November to March to identify a manager that they will want to carry the team forward for from March into the next qualifying campaign. But no. Uh, instead, we've just been dealt with um, constant quotes from Mark Canham saying that he's identified the manager that they want and it'll be sorted. And we saw people like Neil Lennon, who was obviously interviewed for the job and uh, was told that they found that they, they found their man and that it's going to be announced soon. Still not been announced, uh, despite obviously Neil Lennon being one of the favourites there. Then it was Lee Carsley and all the eggs in the basket seemed to be on Lee Carsley. And it was like, oh yeah, Lee Carsley, oh, can we get him? We won't get him. The FA, uh, the FA won't let him speak to the FAI. Uh, the FAI can't afford him. All this type of nonsense. Ultimately, comes out on under-21 duty for England and says that uh, it's probably not the right time for him to go into manage the Irish national team now. He wants to fully focus on the England under-21s, which... You know, looking at the bunch of players that he has to work with there, it would be silly for him to leave and come to Ireland, which is a complicated job right now because of the constant transition that the national team is in. You know, if, if you look at the team there, Seamus Coleman, Robbie Brady, Matt Doherty, the three experienced players. And at that, you know, Seamus Coleman, arguably our best player, struggling, are playing at a struggling Everton side. And he's only starting to get back in the team now. Obviously, he had a bad injury at the back end of last season. And he's only starting to really kind of get back in and get a regular run of games. Play three games this week. So, you know, you're kind of relying on him as the captain. And he's a great captain. Like every manager who's played under him has said that. But why are we not taking what he has said about John O'Shea in the last international camp as something to take forward I'll play the clip and you can hear what Coleman said we're off the balls Nathan Murphy here what's in John then over the last 10 days uh, listen I'm speaking honestly not because he's played me in the last couple of games you know if John wants to get it he'll get it for a few years and I don't know how long I'll be around so I can speak from what I've seen this week and uh, you know he's been really really impressive but not just him him and his staff and uh, I know ideally you know they would like to get a win they probably deserve to win against Belgium for sure and um but this week he's been he's been brilliant and uh, just his you know his aura the way he carries himself you know he's he's uh, he's very modern he knows how to speak uh, to younger players and all the rest but he still knows how to, to lead as a boss and um, he's someone that that uh, I think w would really fit the role and um, again that's me speaking as someone that might be done in a couple of years or whenever that'll be speaking on behalf of Irish football not because he's played me and I think um, he's been really impressive and listen it's not my decision to make but I, I think he's, he's he's put his heart and soul into it and also been very impressive and that's you know hand on heart honestly so as you can see Seamus Coleman has been a big fan of what John O'Shea has done and the likes of Glenn Whelan Paddy McCarthy Brian Kerr and so on so I think I like and I know I've seen Stephen Bradley has came out and kind of said that you know People should, the FAI should listen to Seamus Coleman, the captain of the team, in regards to picking the next manager. And when his words about O'Shea, people are saying, oh, O'Shea doesn't have the experience and, and all of this. But from what I saw, and I was around the press conferences and I was around the media, and I, I watched us in both of the games. And we weren't like outclassed by either team. I know the Belgian team wasn't, you know, their, their starting 11, so to speak. But we did play quite a good get team well, we played quite well against a good side they weren't great but they were a good side and we probably should have won but at the same time you can't put John O'Shea on the pitch and score the goals for the players too because you know ultimately if a couple of chances go our way in that game Evan Ferguson scores the penalty and Ogbeni squares the ball to Seamus Coleman the first couple of minutes we win that game 2-0 and people just forget that because they see the ultimately they see the nil nil scoreline, and I get that football is based on results. But at the same time, he's only given a limited window to work with the players. We lost one nil to Switzerland, and it did look a little bit like the kind of Stephen Kenny type performances. But I do think that these players are all growing, and they're all kind of sh showing maturity. 
beyond their years at the moment but a lot of them are playing either championship level or bottom end of the premier league and there's no one really that's been a star player and you can say that all you want you can say that you know oh well he doesn't get the results and the uh, you know the, the squad it should be performing better but ultimately look at the level that they're playing and they're coming against players who are playing for top teams so at the end of the day we got and look i know shakiri's playing for chicago fire and you know that's not a top team, I get that, but he is a top player, don't get me wrong, he's gone there for a nice payday for to wind down his career, but you're looking at John O'Shea and everyone's just writing him off because of those two games instead of actually going, well look, he's affordable to the FDI and every other manager that's been there, except for the one I'll talk about in a sec, but every other manager that's come in there or been offered the job has said no to it, so you've got Lee Carsey who said no to it, you've got Neil Lennon, who was told he's not getting the job because they've identified their man, which they don't, which they didn't. Then we're told that after the March window, which at, by the time this goes out, it'll be tomorrow, that a new manager is going to be announced on April Fool's Day, so you'd never know, is it going to be taken seriously? Then you've got Gus Poyet yesterday coming out and saying that he has rejected a five-year deal uh, and would rather stay on with the Greece national team, having lost uh, the playoffs to Georgia the other night. And it seems as though Willie Sagnall was the one that the FAI were hanging their hats on, that Georgia would get beaten by Greece and that he would be the one then to come in and manage us going forward. So again, they've completely disregarded everything. And, you know, O'Shea has been constantly facing questions all week in the media saying, will he, would he like to take the job? And he's the only one who's actually come out with certainty and says, I would love the job. And I'm not saying here, sitting here with sentiment and saying that, oh, just because he said he wants the job, he should be giving it. No, but who better to lead the team than a player who's played 118 times for his country, scoring three goals in that time. You know, he's played in two European championships. If anyone knows anything about playing at the high level, it's him. With Manchester United, he's won everything at club level with Manchester United. Um, albeit he wasn't always the first name of the team sheet. He was a regular, reliable player. And, you know, he's played and been around in some of the biggest dressing rooms in the world surely his experience is invaluable in those types of scenarios and the fact that he's gone away and he's worked himself up the ladder going from reading stoke uh, birmingham and then obviously on the ireland underage setup and you know coming in at the 21s and working his way up so he's ultimately climbed the ladder to get in a position to manage the team and i don't think he's he's done anything really wrong now I'm looking at Gus Poyet. What does he know about Irish football? Oh, he came and he said he enjoyed uh, the atmosphere um, when Ireland played Greece. That's all he's come out and done. And everyone's you know creaming over him. And I don't understand it. He's not a very good manager. He's not done much that I can think of at club level. Uh, you know, so why is everyone... Oh, he's passionate. Wow. You know, John O'Shea was passionate too, but everyone's writing him off. And then you go to Roy Keane, which for me, I think is bonkers. You go back and you listen to that Stephen Ward WhatsApp and that tells you everything you need to know why Roy Keane should not be the manager. I'm going to play that clip for you here. Well, basically, lads, Roy was getting on the boys for not training like three days in a row and Johnny's got a bit of a bad knee so he can't like train all the time and um, they're at the training ground and him and Harry were just sitting on the bench just relaxing like icing themselves and stuff so Roy walked over and was like um, weren't you lads training like and, and he obviously blatantly knew why they weren't training because the manager would have told them and they were like oh like can't do a few three days in a row and he was like like why he's like professional footballers fucking shambles that is and they both like didn't say it and, then, and Roy walked off and then apparently he came back over again and he was like um so when he's going to train, like, you know, sick of people pulling out of injuries, like, like, what the fuck's wrong with you? And just like, lads are like, listen, we've got problems. It's just, we do it at our clubs, we can't do it. And then, uh, I don't know, Roy said something under his breath about Johnny or something and walked off and Johnny lost his head, jumped off the bench, walked after him, grabbed his arm and said, what's the story, Roy? Uh, like, if you got a problem, say it to my face, don't fucking walk off. And he was like, yeah, I do have a problem. He's like, you're always fucking, you know, you're not training. Uh, you know, you're, you're getting soft, you, you know. Um, it's no wonder Deutsch doesn't play you. You're fucking always just looking for an argument like you are now. And he was like, 
No, Roy, you're just fucking, you're the one trying to fight, like, cause an argument. Apparently, they were squaring up to each other and having it off and had to be pulled off each other. All the lads were grabbing Johnny away from Johnny was going to kill him. And uh, Roy brought up something about when they, when they were at Ipswich, they had, like, a, a falling out as well. And he was like, oh, what, you're threatening me, threatening me again, John, like you did at Ipswich? And Johnny was like, yeah, what, and you're going to be a shithouse again and just send me my fine in the post rather than saying it to my face. So um, blew over for a few days and then uh, they flew out to France and apparently Johnny just texted Roy and said, listen, Roy, I'm in room, whatever. Uh, if you want to come up, you've obviously got, you know, something on your mind that, you know, pisses you off about me. Do you want to come up because it's causing tension in the squad? Uh, let's, like, let's talk it out. And uh, apparently Roy just rolled back and went, nah, I'm just here to help players and, you know, people like you just stay, stay out of each other's way. Um, you don't need to reply to this message. And that was that. And then um, they got back from France and Harry felt his quad in training again, so he, he wasn't training. And um, Apparently he was getting a, like a bit of treatment in the treatment room and Roy walked in and he was like, when are you going to train, you fucking prick? And Harry was like, what? And he was like, fucking any chance you train? And he explained the situation again and Roy was just going off, going, you're a fucking prick, you know, you're a cunt, you don't even care, you don't want to train. And Harry was just going, Roy, I'm not speaking to you like this, like, just, you know, I'm not listening to you. You know, you're not the manager, so, you know, you you can't say anything to me. Apparently Roy was just going mad, getting, like, fucking worse and worse, and Harry just got up off the treatment bed and walked back to his room, and as he was walking back to his room, Roy was just shouting down the corridor, you're a fucking prick, you're a cunt, you've been all your life. And that was it, really, lads. Didn't come to blows, but basically Roy just losing his head. As you can see there, fighting with players, uh, accusing players of faking injuries... And he's the assistant manager at that point. Imagine he had full control of the group. How many players would not turn up to international duty then? Because whatever, he seemed to pick on kind of English-born Irish players. So for me, I, I just don't think Roy Keane would be a good fit now. I think what he's doing now on the, on the TV as a pundit, on the Gary Neville overlap, that's what he's brilliant at. Keep him at that but not the Ireland job. I just don't think it's a good fit for anybody. It might be commercially for the FAI, you know, that they've got Sky as a sponsor and they want to kind of really get their profile out there, but I just don't think that Keane... I'd be very surprised if he could turn around this Irish team's fortunes, and especially because it's such a young group and he's been out of the game properly since, I think, 2011 as a manager of his own team. He's obviously been assistant in that time and it hasn't worked out. You've even got Ag uh, Gabby Agbongdahor saying, like, he fell out with him at Villa because he was doing similar things where he was like talking down to players and stuff like that and getting frustrated with them and causing rifts within the team. So for me, like I just don't understand why people are going Roy Keane. For, do they forget how the Martin O'Neill Roy Keane thing ended? You know the the results were were draining by the end of it. Like you talk about the end of Stephen Kenny's reign. Martin O'Neill's reign ended like that. He had a brilliant run with the Euros and everything like that. I do not take any credit away from that. Like That was a brilliant achievement and that was a great team and we did get good results. But by the end of it, it was sour and he was falling out with everybody. And I can just see that being a similar thing. I think Keane should be, should be involved in football, but I just don't think he should be involved with the Irish team and I just don't think he should be the manager. So you kind of weigh up all of those options and who are we actually left with? As, you know, someone who comes in as the manager, who are we actually left with? And the only person I can think of is John O'Shea. He's the only one who you can turn around and go, well, everyone else has either rejected it or been rejected. So, who who would want it? And the only person who stands out to me that would actually want it is John O'Shea. And that's why I feel like, as though, in my point of view, I think O'Shea should get the job because... I'm looking at all the other candidates and I just don't under, like I just don't get what they can do for Irish football that O'Shea can't. I enjoyed the brand of football that we were playing. You saw the players come out and back them as well. Um so it seems as though they seem to be quite happy to have O'Shea there as manager. And look, people are going on about experience and this and that. John O'Shea has seen and done it all at both levels, club and international. And as I said, he wasn't the star man at Man United or anything like that, but he was a solid, steady player. And he seems to have that classy kind of way about him with the media. He can handle things. He doesn't look like he's kind of drowning. Um, a bit like Stephen Kenny was whenever the media, you know, when the pressure got on a little bit. John O'Shea, for me, I think this is a, a good opportunity for him 
to get the job and catapult himself because at the end of the day, I think whoever the FAI appoint, if it's not John O'Shea, there's going to be a lot of question marks around it. And I think you've got someone there, as I mentioned, 118 caps for his country, has played under various high-level managers and I'm sure he can take away stuff from that. I said Damien Duff should get a look into, but I think the way the Duff left the FAI when he was under Kenny, uh, I think he wouldn't want it anytime soon anyway and he seems happy enough at at Shelburne but again you're kind of going off a player who has seen and done it at club level as well and international level so I think the candidates should be you know recent players as in maybe John O'Shea Damien Duff and and I know people won't like to hear this one but Robbie Keane for what he's doing at uh, Tel Aviv so Look at and and look, he's off doing his thing over there, and it's not a popular choice, and I get it, but you got to look at um how well he's actually doing with that team. But uh, look, I'll leave it. I'll leave it to you guys in the comments. Like, who do you think should be the manager? Like, what what is actually going on here? Because it's just becoming, as I said, a farce, and it's draining. It's draining for fans, uh, and I'm sure it's it's draining for uh, players as well, not knowing who's going to come in there. But look, as I said, I think. What we should do is we should take into account, as I said, what Stephen Ward said in that WhatsApp, and I think what Seamus Coleman had said about um, John O'Shea and his staff. So let me know what you think anyway in the comments. I'll talk to you all soon. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to hit the subscribe button. I'll talk to you all soon.